Hello and welcome to another Brown Consulting webinar for the Excel and Power BI webinar series. This is the September 2018 edition and we're going to talk about 10 things you didn't know Power Query can do. Right, so what are we going to talk about this month? It's all about Power Query. So we're going to do an introduction to Power Query for you that don't know Power Query. And then we'll look through 10 things you didn't know Power Query can do. Or maybe you did, but interesting things about Power Query. First thing we we'll talk about is call up uh, function and help, then auto matching headings and consolidating sheets, uh, data exploration, summarizing data, consolidating from a folder, and then looking up when you're trying to look up two tables when you don't have a unique reference. So it's like a VLOOKUP without unique reference, but VLOOKUP in Power Query. Creating columns from example, something called flash fill in Excel. You could actually do flash fill in Power Query now. Very cool using the choose column button so now i mean you could filter out rows now you could filter out columns very interesting and view relationships between queries you want to see almost like a data model for the power query something like that we'll see that and then consolidating worksheets in power bi it's a bit different than consolidating worksheets in excel we'll see the slight difference between the two so that's what we're going to do this month so if you're following, just sit tight and enjoy. Let's move on. How many of us here have used Power Query? Okay, I'm jumping to the next step now. All right, so Power Query, introduction to Power Query. This is Power BI Desktop. So this Power BI Desktop and Power Query, if you go to Home, you see Power Query under your Get Data. So everything, external data, enter data and stuff. This Get Data is Power Query. Now, if I open Excel, as Power Query was born in Excel, really. Power Query is an ETL, Extract and Transform and Load Tool. It's an excellent, excellent tool. In fact, most people always have problems with their reporting because their data is not structured right. And for the really very advanced users of Excel, they use VBA and use VBA to clean the data and stuff, but it's not as versatile and cool as Power Query. Power Query is, is excellent. So even in Excel, so it was born in Excel. So if I show you Excel, this is Excel and Power Query is right there under data. Get and transform, all of this is Power Query. It's exactly the same thing as I just showed you. This, everything here is the same as the tool Power BI desktop. Right, so what we're gonna do with Power Query, let's see what's the first thing we're going to do. We're doing 10 things you didn't know Power Query can do. And number one in our list is what, let's see. Hold on, control and click. Well, guys, not clicking. Let me just manually go to number one. All right. So number one is call up function help and using M in Telesense. Mm, call up function help. So let's assume you don't know the function you want to use. Let me just go to a blank query. How do I get a list of functions? I don't know the function I want to use. So if you go to a blank query, you simply type equals to. You type your hash key and you type shared yeah equals to hash key shared now i don't know why they called it shared they should have just called it equals hash key power query functions or something shared anyway when i enter you will see a list of everything power query i mean all the functions are there see the nice list of functions all sorts of stuff so really if you want to see this as a table let's let's into, into a convert it into a table yeah so i convert it into a table and if I was in Excel, I could just load this into Excel and you see all the list of functions. But really why I did that is if you click on any one of this, you would see the explanation of that function, really. So let's pick something. Let's do, let's come here and do a list. We're going to look for a function called list dates. It's going to list uh, dates. So I'm just typing list there, dot maybe dates. So here, this is, this is the function I want to see, this one. So click OK. So this list days, I'm just going to click on the function button here. So this is the function. So I just click on the function button. It explains what the function does. You can read everything about it here. So let's create a, a list of dates, right? I want to create a list of dates. Typically, you click on this button to say what is your start. When are you starting? What are you starting? So let's assume I want to start on the first. Now look at this, the input value 1 September did not pass using local English United Kingdom and short date format DMMMYYY. Hmm. Now what this is telling you, this is quite annoying. This is saying that the way 
I'm writing my date, the computer basically knows it as United Kingdom date. But this system is looking for uh, this button here is looking for an American date. So I just I just have to manually type, um, let's say one slash nine slash twenty eighteen. Now for most of most of you, it will work fine. Well, for me, it's not working fine because I'm using the UK dating system. My UK date, if I go to my control panel, uh, you'll see that my date is UK, but I won't go into that. It's looking for a US dating system. But anyway, 1-9-2018 is my computer's dating system. Count, uh, let's say we want to start, let's say I just want 30 days, right? 30 days. And then um, my step is one day each. So 30 days, starting from 1st of January, give me 30 days, one day per interval. Say so, okay. So see what it does. It gives me 1st of September to the end. How did I know that? Because I went to look for a list of functions. I wanted a list of dates. And you see, now I have a list of dates. I can now convert this to a table by coming to the top left and saying to a table. So now this, you can just ignore this and say okay. So this is now a table. I can double click this heading and say this is my date. I enter. And then I can convert this to a data type of date instead of any I call party to date. And I'm in business. So this is my date. And I can close. Let me not close and load, close and apply. I'll just apply what I've just done. Let's call this a date list. Or well, I've converted it to a table, so it's not really a list, but anyway, date table, right? So date table. So you get the idea. But really, we got this by using um, a function. We, we identified, uh, we had a, a list of functions or something. List functions. Yeah. Now is our first trick. So I enter. So list functions. There we have it. Now, if I go into the view section here and I go to the advanced editor, you will see all the M code in here. See all the M code. Now, this is the new look M code for the September update. You have all these colors and everything because it now has IntelliSense, right? So it has IntelliSense. And anything you do, I mean, it, it kind of will help you, really. It helps you move, move on. So look at this. I'm typing name. You can see all the different help here date.month.name, anything to do with name in the, in Power Query will come out. So this each, for example, I mean, this is, I could delete that just to show you. And if I type each, I'm starting to type, it's giving me some help. Well, not very smart help, but well, it still help. <laughs> so each, so once you, you type your queries now, it gives you like Excel, it helps. So that's IntelliSense, really cool. Uh, what are you saying? Are you sure you want to cancel? Yes, I want to cancel or cancel, close, don't, don't save. All right. So that's my first query, guys. Let's go back to Power BI and see what's the next thing on the agenda. So that's number one. Number two, not apply any changes. Let's say number two. The second thing is we want to auto match headings and consolidate sheets in Power BI. Now, what do I mean? For me to show you that, I need to open something in Excel. So there's usually a problem in Excel when you're consolidating data, when, you're cons when you want to auto, auto match certain things. So let's say this is my spreadsheet. And right now I have my name, my department, my title, and then I have total gross, basic, housing, and leave, right? So G has leave, for example. If I go to August, August. G for August is not leave. So let me zoom in a bit so you see that. So if you check my August, the column G is housing. In my May, column G, what's column G? Let's go my May column. Column G is housing. Okay, we're lucky. It's housing for G, right? So in June, Column G is not housing, column G is transport. So column G is transport, see? Right, so here we have, if I go to March, let's even go to March. If I go to March, let's see what does March have to offer. So in this March sheet, March is even a little bit more confusing because if you look at March, it says the first column A is title, name, and then department name. Uh, if I go to April, Column A, you know how very annoyed you are in your office when someone gives you a really hopelessly scattered table. Look at this. It's, it's name, department, then title. 
but in March is title, department, and name, and then everything else is scattered. So we know that the tables contain everything. It's just that it's all kind of messed up somehow. So Power Query will help solve this for us. So let me close this. By the way, if you want to do a query for an Excel workbook, or so you have to make sure it's closed. It has to be closed first. So we're not doing the query from uh, Excel. We're going to do it from here. So auto matching headings. That's what we're doing. Consolidating sheets in Power BI. So two things in one. We're auto matching as well as consolidating sheets. So what do we do? Well, we need to connect to Excel because the data is in Excel. So we get data from Excel. So where are we getting data from? I have all my data here. And this is its auto headings recon. So I click on this and I, I, I can just double click on it. So it's going to open it. So we're connected to the auto heading sheet, right? So all of this, we want to kind of consolidate it. So you click on the auto heading. Now, if you click on the auto heading, if you look here, I can't edit. Now, what's happening? I can't edit. In Excel, I'll be able to edit. Really, there's a trick. All you need to do is right click on the folder, this folder, and then say edit. So once you say edit, all right, so it's up. There we go. So we've opened it, and now we need to kind of consolidate it a bit. Right, there's something about this trick. When you want to consolidate and keep the headings and let it look at the headings and everything, that only works when you're using table. Now, for those that know Excel a lot, in Excel, when you have it, it data, when you have data in Excel, if you convert it to a table by doing, um, by just clicking anywhere within the data and going to insert table, this is a special thing that table does. So this, this data is all the same, right? But this is a sheet, this is an Excel sheet, and then this is a table in Excel. So we need to filter out the sheet because it doesn't work with sheets, it works with tables. So you need to convert every single data you have, every single sheet, Make it a table. Just control T, control T, control T. Just take note of that. So we are going to leave. We need our data, and I think we need our item. We need to know what month it is. We just want to have that. So I'm highlighting this, holding my control key, and clicking the next thing, and then removing other columns, right? So remove other columns, and then we can now expand this. So we expand, and usually I like to remove this original name prefix. We don't need that. So we have all this data here. We're expanding and we'll say, OK. So I've expanded. And if you look at it, we have our name, department, title. And uh, believe it or not, everything would have consolidated nicely. And then we have the item there telling us which month it is, right? So this thing is, you, you'll be wondering, how possible is this, right? So if you remember. Name department title, right? So this is department police, but let me filter by March. You remember that March was really kind of hopeless. Let me load more. Um, let me filter by March. Uh, March and June. Let's just see March and June, right? So let's go left. So you see name, department, title. Is it properly done? It's changed it and made it all look and feel correct, right? So let me remove my filter. I'm going to click delete this step. So this is the query. This is the query for consolidating. Pretty simple and pretty cool. So that's auto headings recon. So that's our second query. Let's just apply. Let me close here, apply. So we've moved on to, let's get back to our Power BI to do the next one. And then we'll do the next one. So let's see the next one. So data exploration, understanding data table profiles. So sometimes you just want to see the profile of whatever it is. What's this query? Let's have a look at what it is all about. You know, just a quick profile look. How will that work? So let's check. So let's use a query to determine. Let's, the last query we did, let's see if we can check the profile for the query. OK, so let me go into get data. Let's go to the query. How do I quickly get back to my query? Edit queries, let's view, edit queries, data source, query, 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 where's view my queries? I have a view button. See, I'm used to the Excel bit where I can just view it. So anyway, I, I can't view my queries. I have to just right click and edit, but there's a view query button. So here we are. I want to know the profile of this query. So let's duplicate this query. We're going to duplicate this query. Okay, so I've duplicated my query, right? 
and so this is my query hmm. well I I've, well let me just find what profile is this query this second query let's test it so let me come to a new query let's go to um, I'm going to add a new source right new source and say blank query yeah, so I'm just going to write a blank query and this query when you want to test the profile for something you, you just say equals to in the blank query equals to table and spell table table dot profile and then I open my bracket and normally I open my bracket and then I just type the name of the query right so we're testing auto headings recon uh, xls x so if I do that auto heading recon xls x now close my bracket unfortunately I don't think this will work so let's look see yep it didn't work and that's because our name has spaces if our name didn't have any spaces it will work fine but because our name has spaces we need to do some funny additions to this code we have to put a hash here then we now need to put a double quote and then we go to the end of the code here and now put a double quote and by the way you shouldn't put a dot in between this recon and xlsx so if I enter should work this time so now it's given me analysis of this data saying that uh, minimum April SEP of course we wouldn't have that uh, basics and stuff uh, it's not really useful but this just identifies or gives you detailed analysis of that query data so so here if you check I mean it says department be like education the minimum is null, 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 null. All of this is null. Now, if you look up at the, at the data types, the one that is actually working here, look at it, the count, 1.2, 1.2. This Anytime you see ABC123, ABC123, it's very annoying. ABC123 is a very, very wicked data type. Let, let's go back. Come here and check. Here we have ABC123, ABC. These are what you should always do when you do your queries is highlight and change the data type. Never leave any. Any is terrible make this text now these are abc123 abc123 you can do maths with abc123 abc123 means any make sure that your data types are the end of your query once you finish your query highlight everything and make sure the data types are correct so decimal maybe this is a decimal number right all these are decimal numbers this guy can be text which is already text so that's key so i'm going to apply this apply and because this is my new query that I did depends on this, if I come back to this query and then let me um, apply. So now, I mean, look at all this. No, 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 no. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't make sense. Anyway, here we're talking about, if you look at this, this is auto headings recon, recon XLSX. And I think where I went to do all those corrections was in I would say heading recon XLS2. So I didn't correct this one. So this one still has all those ugly A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3. So we do that same thing here. Or I could actually change the query. So this query should be looking at the one that ends in 2, right? So if I come here and uh, type type 2, remember we, we clean the data, I mean the the data types for two, if I enter, yeah, you see that that's working now, right? So too much duplicates kind of gets people confused, right? But anyway, so this works fine. Let's call this one profile. Let's call this profile. All right, so moving on, let's do another one. So moving on, let's get back to power bi what's the next thing on the list so we're going to summarize data how do we summarize data let me go back to our query let's see if i can borrow a previous query we've used how do we summarize so yes if i look at this auto recon uh, we know that this auto recon is from january to december right if you remember this january if i load more lots of things this is all this month so what i want to do is just consolidate everything i don't want to do it in excel i want to do it in power query so if I want to consolidate, basically that means I don't want January, February, I just want everything together. So frankly, before I do that, I will need to delete this column. I don't need it by month. So I'm going to remove this 
doesn't add any value. Now, if I go to the beginning, I'm going to consolidate everything. So the first thing you should do is all these numbers, all these values you see should be in a single column. How you do that is you highlight your text. This is your unique ID for the transaction. Highlight all three of them. You right click and then you unpivot all the columns. Where is unpivot all the columns? So you've unpivoted this. These are now your line items, your payroll line items, pay lines. And then these are your values. Now, can you see that ABC123? It's so annoying. If I leave that ABC123, it's going to mess us up. ABC123 means anything, any value. Never ever use data type of any. <laughs> you will go very far in your Power Query analysis, and then you're like, what's going on? It's because you can't consolidate with any. You need to consolidate with decimal number. It's fine, decimal number. So change that, very important. This guy can see his ABC123. In fact, all of these texts, all these are text. So really, all this should be text, right? So data types, just note one thing. Data types, data types, data types are extremely important. So how are we going to do this? We need to do something called group by. Right, so here we are. Um, now, what you want to do is tell it to consolidate values, right? So if I come to group by, really I'm going to group by, so group by is like consolidation, so group by. Now if you notice here, group by pay line, you choose which pay line, or am I grouping by? The thing with group by is you need a unique identifier. This, you have to uniquely identify each line so that when we're grouping, we know that, look at this guy, all this Cabra Michael, Cabra Michael, Cabra Michael, we need to sum up all of this Cabra Michael. But it's not just Cabra Michael. Well, Cabra Michael, police, maybe there are two people called Cabra Michael, but hopefully there'll be one Cabra Michael as the police department and is a captain and we want his transport allowance. And guess what? All his transport allowance for all the various months, we want that. Not just, this is just one month. All the transport allowance for every single month. So we need to kind of join this and join this and join this and join this. Then we now group. Now, I think it's always better to use advanced. So you go to advanced. Then you're saying, I want to group by, um, let me say name. Then you add, I want to group by department, add. Now what I see is this is kind of a waste of time. Before you group by, just highlight all the columns you know you want to group by. So name to pay line. You know, all of this should be grouped together and then you're now consolidating the value, right? So once you do that, click on group by. Then it goes to advance immediately and types everything for you. So it just saves you time. So right here, we're here, and what are we doing? We want the total or the summary. Really, this is the summary, yeah? And here I go to my operation. I want a sum. And uh, what do I want to sum by? I want to sum by the values. So we're grouping all this, and then we're giving, a, giving us a summary which sums all the values, right? Say OK. What happens? It's basically going to give us this is the consolidated gross pay. This is the consolidated basic, the consolidated transport. Everything is consolidated, not monthly anymore, fully consolidated. So that's how you consolidate, right? And uh, I can call this, what will I call this? We're going to call this consolidated. For summary, let's just call it summarize, summarize data. Summarize data. I also advise you don't use spaces in your names. Power Query doesn't like that. Anytime you use spaces, the code just changes. The code you use in another query will change. So anyway, summarize data, that's cool. So what's next? What's the next trick? So trick number four or trick number five. We've done four, trick number five. Just to recap for you guys, the first trick was call up function help and use the M IntelliSense, the new M IntelliSense for September 20. 18 power bi update second trick we did was auto match headings and consolidate sheets in power bi the third trick we did was data exploration understanding data table profiles the fourth trick was summarizing data and now the fifth trick is the next thing we're doing is consolidate from a folder so we'll do this trick next okay so consolidating from a folder so we need to go to query and see how we can consolidate from a folder so I come to home, I go to edit queries, edit query, 
you know we've already done four nice tricks um, if you are following on this is trick number five so number five we're consolidating from a folder so i'm going to add a new source now if i was doing this from power bi it wouldn't be add a new source i'll just do a fresh one but anyway let's add i can add a new source in fact let me show you that or in power bi from here directly i can get data so it's the same thing really it's still going to go to the query so get data and we're consolidating from a folder now in excel it looks a little bit different but power query is just the way it looks so i need to go to more here in power bi go to more and then i can check for a folder by the way in 2018 now you can consolidate from pdf this is just crazily amazing I mean, I have one uh, file that has about a thousand pages for the government, and that's the government's budget. I'm going to go look for that file and see how I can extract everything from that file into Power Query. So you can consolidate in a folder. Uh, you have some tables in the folder. I put it. You use Power Query to pull it out of that PDF, uh, and pull it out of the PDF. Consolidate from PDF. Anyway, that's cool. Probably next webinars we'll see how that works. Right now, we want to consolidate in, from a folder. So click on folder, click on connect. I need to browse to go and find where that folder is. So I browse, I know it's on my desktop. Uh, Power BI, I have consolidate folder. So that's this one. So I click OK and say OK. So it's going to get ready to edit. My folder is going to open Power Query. Now I can do combine, but really, I don't advise you do combine. Just go straight to edit and let's type the code ourselves. Okay. So we'll go to edit, look at all this, the data I'm consolidating, payroll data, click edit. So edit opens Power Query. And here we have everything. Really the key thing you need is this binary. All this is just extra, extra information. You could leave the name if you like, but really I just want the binary. So I'm just gonna right click and remove all the columns. And then I expand this a bit and see what happens. We're trying to expand. Now look at this, this is the data here, but really I need to extract information from this. Expanding really won't help me. I need to extract data from inside this binary. So I need another column. So I'm gonna to go to add, I'm going to go to custom column, and I'm gonna add a column. Uh, the name there doesn't matter, it's really I want to get out the workbook. So okay, we say we're extracting, right? Let's just say we're extracting. Let's, let's type we're extracting something, right? Now there's a code, a function to extract your workbook. It's called Excel dot workbook. Then you open your bracket and then the context, right? Now here is where there's another trick. Now if you followed good practice when you are creating your data and all the data that you're extracting are inside tables, if they're inside tables, well, that's fine. Or if they all start from row, really, if they all start from row one. So if they start from A, and that's um, um, row, row A in your Excel, which I know all my data starts from row A, then row A will have a heading. So row A has a heading. And if row A has a heading, which means the very first row always has a heading. So the way to tell Power Query that, look, row A has a heading is to add to this code and say comma true. So if I say comma true, it just knows that, okay, that's a way of telling it that row A has a heading. So if I click okay, it's going to try and pull out the table here. This is really what I need to expand. I don't need binary anymore, so I'm removing that. Then now if I expand, you will see that this is what's inside. And really, I think we should keep name and data or maybe item. Item, I think is better. So I'm going to unselect all, say on data and item. Item tells me a little bit more. The rest I really don't need. But uh, let me just, in fact, cancel this and just show you what you have in here. So if I click on table, so this is really what you have. I have name, April, I have a table, I have April, again, this is the item, April, then sheet, then false. I really don't need that. I'm going to kind of close this, come back to this and then when I expand, I said I want just data and item, and then I say OK, so it's going to expand, and then I now expand this table again, so it's going to extract all the columns in the table, and then I say OK. So here we have it. This is consolidated everything in the folder. 
and all you now need to do is ensure that your data types are correct so this data type is go to transform or home make sure that this is text then from this cross pay all the way to the end this should be decimal number and then I can bring this guy back to just want to move it I'm moving it all the way to the left so that it's next to the text so I'm bringing it here just dragging it here and here we have April let me bring it here and then I make this guy also text so that's how you consolidate from a folder it's pretty straightforward yeah this is all and then make sure you change your data types that's very key so consolidate folder I think that's the name let us apply and then we go to another trick so I'm just applying the steps as this if this was Excel I could extract everything and take it to Excel immediately and that's our consolidated data all right so that's consolidate folder let's see what the next trick is so the next trick is fuzzy lookup so we're going to do a lookup without a unique key so I'll show you the Excel files first and then we'll see how we're going to do this auto automatically in Power Query, right? So let me open, I have some Excel files. I'm interested in look up Excel files for referee and results. So if you're a football fan, you'll understand this data. This is, I have dates here. I have my home team, which is Man U. Yes, I support Man U. I'm sorry for you guys that don't. Anyway, um, yes, yes, we're in trouble nowadays, but we'll get back. We'll come out of it, you know. Can't be winning every time. Just you have to give other people a chance, right? So anyway, away team is Leicester. So we have home team, away team. We have our home score and away score. Now, anytime we lose, I'm sure it's the referee's fault. So one thing we would like to have is the name of the referee that really uh, manned this whole match. Is we need to know the referee's name. I need to know the referee's name here. Yeah. So where do I get that data? Well, I have another table called referees, which I, all this data is from the internet. We downloaded it. Ahmed downloaded it for us. Check Ahmed out. Really cool. He went and downloaded football data. I can't remember what team he supports, but anyway, that's fine. So dates, home, away, and referee. So if you look at this data, you have your date, the match happened, home team, away team, and referee. So this uniquely identifies, this three uniquely identifies um, the data. Now, if I was doing VLOOKUP, I mean, what would I do to get referee in here? If I was doing VLOOKUP, right, I want referee, referee. Uh, I would need to concatenate, if you guys know concatenate, concatenate this three, have it as another column, then do a VLOOKUP of that to the other sheet and blah, 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 and then get the referee, right? Uh, I'm not going to do that. No, thank you very much. I want to do all this VLOOKUP without a unique reference in Power Query. So let's see how that works. I'm closing this. Don't save, and I'm closing this guy. And yeah, I can do it here in Excel. You know, Power Query is in Excel, but I want to do it in Power BI. So I'm back here. So look up without unique key. How do we do that? Let's go to the query. Edit query. So we're going to bring in um let's just edit query i'm going to bring in the data obviously so and then we're now going to do some interesting merging so here i'm going to get data new source is in excel i need to browse this is the lookup it's referee data and result data so let's take the result data and we'll just bring that in this is my results data i just take it and say okay bring the result data in let's call it this is called results this is fine let's bring in the um, other data so I'll get another data this is my referee data right so this is referee data and result data so if uh, in Excel I could be probably managing this data and uh, um, this data keeps growing so that's fine so here I want to combine the referee information. All I need from this is this referee. I just want to add this referee to my results. Yeah, right. So how how do I do that? Let's let's create a new query. So it's like I need to take results starting from results, and I need to like group. I need to merge. I need to merge my query. So I'm going to create a merge query, but instead of overriding this query i want to create a new a query merge queries but as new as a completely new query so i'm going to merge 
query, starting with my results. I want to merge it to my referees data. And here I'm just going to do a left outer join. All these fields, see these fields here, all the way here. I'm merging it to this fields here, all these fields, yeah? One, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm doing a left outer join, which means this is what I want to join to this one, right? So anyway, let's see how that works. Let's say, okay, so the selection has matched 790 out of 790. This looks cool, doesn't it? That means all the data here is all here. It's already matched it. So this is VLOOKUP, right? So click OK. And what happens? You have your data that has come in and you have your merge. Let's just call this the, oh, I call it the lookup. We're not done yet, but I'll just call this the lookup. Okay, so I enter look up. So this is the referee table. I mean, the referee data I brought in. If I expand this, all I need from this, I don't need the data. I have the data. I don't need home. I don't need away. All I need is the referee's name. So click OK. And see, the referee's name comes in. In fact, I can take this guy and take it to the left so that now I have date, home, team, away, team, referee, and then my data. And these two files are still there. See, these two files are there. I can keep on growing as they like. And then this is my third query, which is my lookup query. Perfect. And I can load this and do all my analysis I like. So that is how you do a lookup even without a reference. You've just created a reference for yourself instead of doing all this in, in Excel. It's far better and more efficient to do it here in Power Query. So I'll apply the steps. So results, this, I've applied all of them. So we see we've done our query. So in fact, all these three, let me create a folder. Let's be a bit neat here because I needed three things here. So I'm going to create a group. And this group, I'm going to call it the lookup. I'm just going to call it lookup, right? Um, how to do the lookup in Power Query without even without a reference, right? Even without a reference. Right. So I click OK. So I create a folder. And I can now take these three guys. Uh, I'll just, unfortunately, I can't drag it. Maybe later we can drag. But for now, I just have to right click and say uh, move to group lookup. Right click and uh, move to group, uh, move to group lookup. Right click and move, come on, move to lookup. So this, I'm just being organized, right? So that's lookup. So what's our next, um, what's the next trick? We've done five now, or is it six? I think we've done six. So number seven, what's number seven? Create columns from example, flash fill, interesting. Let's show you how it's done in Excel. Let me open something in Excel so you understand what flash fill does in Excel. It's such an excellent tool in Excel. Many people don't even have forgotten about it or don't even know about flash fill. So look at these names, right? These common names we have. Let's assume I just want the um, surname, and then I want the first name. So I want the surname and first name. Now, if you're very good in Excel, right, you would do some really fancy formulas. Now, let me just, should I show off my Excel skills? No, I'm not. OK, well, we, what, what is the delimiter? There are two delimiters here. What is what is stopping? Well, how do you know the surname or how do you know the first name? Well, the surname has a comma after it and then it has a space. So what you could do, you could search for, um, let's say you could search for comma within this guy, right? So when you search for it, it says it's seven. So if it's seven, that means uh, you have six characters for the surname, right? So if I drag this down a little bit, you see that this is uh, 779999. Oh, that's strange. All nine. Okay, and then this is seven, right? Now do you have seven and nine? What kind of names do we have here? Okay, 11 and five, better. <laughs> so seven. So what we now need to do is come in here and then say, you know what? I want you to extract from the left. I want you to extract from the left. Extract names from the left. And... How many characters are extracting? This is seven, remember, minus one. I'm going to close our bracket. And then you get his name. Right. But this is too much stress. 
And so what Excel did, which is so cool, it said just type, just type Cabral. So I'm just going to type Cabral. Then I type a second one, and that will be like an example. I type Fallon. And guess what? Excel has an idea. It says, hey, I know what this guy is doing. And let me give him an example. Okay. I will show him if he's happy with what he wants, then I, he should just type enter. So I just type enter. Guess what? It just came out. Perfect. So first name, same thing, same trick. Michael or Michael. Oh, sorry, Michael. I spell it the other way. Now, another trick. A shortcut for a flash fill is actually control E. So I don't need to give it another example. Like it says, tell it, look, do you know what? Use this guy and just fill it. Control E. So it did control E and it filled out. So this is Excel. It's quite impressive in Excel, yes? But let's do all these tricks. Let's do the same trick in Power Query. You don't want to do in Excel because Excel means you need to do this every month. In Power Query, it is automated. So just know that Excel is good, but Power Query is better for some things. So I'm going to close this. Don't save. Um, minimize. And let's do this creating columns from example flash fill inside Power Query. So I go to Edit and edit queries and then now I need to go and look for what file should we use let's see you see this yeah we could use this guy right yeah so let's use this um, um I'm borrowing from this I don't know who who used this can you remember well there's a trick that will tell you okay who is using what so we don't mess things up I'll show you that trick later but I'm going to duplicate this just in case duplicate Right, and then I'm going to rename this guy. Let me call him uh, Flash Fill. Oh, I can't spell Flash Fill. Okay, so Flash Fill. I need to fill this just like I did in um, Excel. So, how do I do that? Well, there's a wonderful new tool. The adder, I can't remember when this was added, but columns from example or column from example column from example is a new tool so i click on the drop down and i say um from all columns or from selection well i've already selected this this is the example i want to use so say from selection so what it does is just gives me this box here and inside this box all i need to do is type so i just start typing just like flash fill copy cabral right and then i enter Cab Cabral, enter. When I enter, just like Flash Fill, if you remember how we did it in Excel, all I need to do is now say OK. Once I say OK, see it's filled it out, I can call this the surname. Right? Then I can still go back and, and select the same column like this and then um, say I need another example from selection. And then this time around, obviously, I'm doing the surname, right? Or the first name. So it's uh, my. My call and enter, and you can see it's already filled it out. You just needed one example and just say okay. And then this is the first name. Now remember, this is power. I don't really like space, so this is power query. So when your data grows, you never ever need to do this again, it's just automated. That's why this is more superior than your Excel. So if I drag this to the left, so let's just put the names close to the surnames, everything is recorded. And if you look to the right, you see that this is being recorded. And in fact, let's even look at the formula, the, the M code. You know, Power Query's language is M. So let's have a look at the M code it used to do this automatically. If I click on this, this is the M code up here. No, not, not the M code. Let's click on, where is that? Insert text delimiter. So look at the M code it used. Now, if I put on the magnifier, let's just see if you can see that. Uh, let me get my magnifying glass up. So this is the M code. Looks ugly. Table dot add column, rename columns with a hash. Then text after delimiter, each text dot after delimiter, name, comma, space. So all that story, just see the space. Just that space. Now, it's similar to how we did it in Excel, but that's Power Query. Then you can actually use this to learn how to write M code. Okay, so that is how we do it. I go to number eight is use the choose column button. What do we mean by that? Let's have a look at it as the next trick. Choose column button. 
right? Let's see how that works. Okay, so let's go to query, edit, query. I don't think I saved the last query, so let's um, come to home here and just apply any other steps that I did. I think I did some steps for flash fill in the last video. So flash fill, um, here we are. So here we want to talk about choosing columns. Now, one big thing, when Power Query was being developed, you could kind of highlight like this and, and delete, but what about if you had a hundred columns? Then you need to kind of highlight a hundred columns and delete. So what they invented, which was cool the first time around, was they kind of allowed you to highlight the columns and do something to other columns. So you could right click and say something like remove other columns, or you could say on pivot other columns. Yeah. So that was a very cool move. But then sometimes, right, you, you actually want to remove just this guy and this guy and another one somewhere else. So what you could do instead of doing that is you choose your column. So under home, there's a new button here called choose columns. I'm not too sure when it was added, but choose columns. So if I go to choose columns, I can actually, are you sure you want to insert a step? No, 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 let's cancel. So look at this, I'm in a very different step here. So I have to be at the last step. So I was already in a mid step. So I didn't want to insert any steps. Let's just do it properly. So I come here to choose column. I say choose column. Then you can actually choose which columns you want to keep. I can remove this. I like this guy, I like this guy, I like this guy, and this guy. No, I don't want this guy. I want this one, and I want this one, and I want that one. So you are choosing your columns. And once you've chosen, and you say OK, it's basically written the code here. It says table.select. Let's see how this looks. So look at what is writing here. It says table dot select columns, reorder column name, department name, title, leave, detail, blah, blah, blah. These are the columns you have chosen, isn't it? So that's how choose column works. Pretty simple and very useful. All right, so what's next? Let's save this. Uh, I did this on flash fill, right? Mm, I shouldn't have done that. I should have just given it another name and said choose columns. All right, flash fill. I'm going to duplicate you, duplicate. Then I'm going to call this one, choose columns, choose columns. Right, that's another trick, by the way, duplicating columns. And then I go back to flash fill and I rewind. So you can press rewind, I've deleted this, I've press rewind, reorder columns, fine. So flash fill is fine, this is choose columns. And then I apply all these nice queries I've done, I'm applying everything's up to date. Yes, and then what's our next trick? So uh, penultimate trick, what's it? It is view relationships between queries. Hmm. How do you view relationships? We've done so many queries. What's the relationship between them? Let's have a look. So view relationship within queries. How do we do that? So obviously I said view, right? So it should be somewhere in view. So if I go to view, then you can see query dependencies. So click on that, and then you have this dialog box. Let me maximize it. This dialog box, I can zoom in a bit so you can see it. So this is a mapping of all the queries you have. So this is one source. If I hover over it, you see this is my source called Consolidate Folder. If you had watched all the videos uh, from the beginning to the end, you would see that we did a Consolidate Folder, and this is it here. So this is just the direct link. Then we had, I did a lot of stuff with one, um, one file called auto headings recon so auto headings recon we loaded we did summarize data with it we did auto headings recon we duplicated it we did a flash fill with it we did choose columns with it this auto recon number two we did profile with it we created a table profile so we use this quite a lot you can see the mapping of how we used it what else did we use here is um, lookup so this was lookup if you remember the referee stuff we had results for our matches we had the referees and then we did a lookup so you see how nice and neat it is so if your queries are nice and neat like this you can know what is depending on what so if I come and try and delete this for example it won't allow me to delete this query because lookup is dependent on this so if I want to delete this I must delete this first right so that's how you use your query dependencies and that's how um, Power BI and Excel manage all these query dependencies. You can see the mapping. It almost looks like Power Pivot. Yeah, Power Pivot data model. Very cool. Right, what's our last and last tip? Let's see our last tip. 
So the last tip of the day is consolidate worksheets in Power BI. Mm, consolidate worksheets. Well, we did consolidate in Excel and we found out something. So let me just quickly show you that. So if I go to Excel, and you try and consolidate, you go to get data, you're consolidating from a folder, or you're consolidating a workbook, consolidating a workbook, and I want to consolidate auto headings recon, for example, right? So you get this dialog box, yeah? Now in this dialog box, I want to consolidate all these sheets. So definitely I'm going to select this. Once I select this, I edit. That's Excel. Let's do the same thing in Power BI. So if I'm in Power BI, I want to consolidate. I go to get data. I'm going to get data from Excel. And then I am going to come here and I want to consolidate based on auto headings recon, right? Same thing, exactly the same thing as I just did in Excel. Right, so same look and everything, but when I click on this, you see edit is not activated. Why is that? I think that's a bug, I'm not sure but I think it's a bug. Look at this, this is the Excel version, right? April, let me see edit, but if I click on this for where all the sheets are housed, this is the workbook, I can see edit, right? And I can click on edit. If I click on edit, this is Excel. If I click on edit in Excel, it brings up the query, which is fine. It brings up Excel query and it's ready to move, it's ready to roll, this is Excel. In Power BI, the same thing I did in Power BI, I can't click on edit. What I can do though, is I can right click on this and then edit. So this is probably a bug. So this last one was really to just showcase a bug. Click on edit. And once I click on edit, yes, you can see that Power Query is working exactly the same way as I have it in Excel. So this is the Excel version, right? This is the Excel version and this is the Power Query version, right? So I guess guys, we are done with the demos. These are all the demos. Let's see what's the next on the next page. So about the sponsors, so all these webinars were sponsored by D Brown Consulting. We do training, we do consulting, we do payroll. We are the analyst training hub. We provide tailored training for the modern analysts from zero to AI, we like to say. So we provide Power BI training, financial modeling training, Excel, and all the other kinds of training. You can check us out at www.dbrownconsulting.net. And if you want a free Excel course, just go to www.officetraininghub.com. You get a free Excel course there. We also do payroll. We do. We have a special software where we can guarantee confidentiality. We also use Power BI to kind of consolidate data and clean up data and automate reports for our various clients. So that's what we do. We have various affiliates. Uh, we have some of our courses are CPD certified. And of course, some of our courses are also certified by the Financial Modeling Institute. We do the exams here in Nigeria. Uh, Financial Modeling Institute is a new body. Go to um, fminstitute.com. Excellent body that has certifications in financial modeling. We are also Microsoft partners and we're also affiliated with the ATD, Association for Talent Development. Right, one of our cool tools we have in Brown Consulting is we have a model, we have a methodology for training, which is pre-training or we you do a pre-training, which is a pre-work, which you do online before you come for a classroom training. And then we have various things that will make us identify whether you're applying those skills. So it's our PTA system, very cool system. You could check it out. You could send us an email to training at Brown Consulting for more details for our PTA system, which also has four proprietary reporting system. So our reporting system is in, in Power BI, very detailed reporting system. So please contact us. This is our contact details. We are D Brown Consulting. You can go call us on 0700 Training. If you are calling from outside Nigeria, it's plus 234-700 Training, or just email training at dbrownconsulting.net, or go to our website at dbrownconsulting.net. Or you could go online and get some nice free courses and some other paid courses on officetraininghub.com. I would advise you do the report automation in modern Excel course. It's an excellent course. I'll teach you a lot of the tricks you've seen here. So thank you very much, guys. We've managed to do quite a few queries. I did various stuff, various tricks that Power Query has that could be hiding. And uh, we also showed you everything using Power BI and 
again, as I said, is exactly the same tool in Excel. Although we just saw a quick bug where Excel seemed to have trumped Power BI. Well, I'm sure it's just a tiny bug. The Power BI team will find it and correct it. So thank you. I've been David, your host, and this has been Brown Consulting. And uh, we hope to see you again soon. And next webinar is the third Thursday of every month. Every third Thursday of the month, we do these webinars. This has been 10 Things You Didn't Know Power Query Can Do, sponsored by Brown Consulting. And it's our Excel and Power BI webinar series, which is held every month on the third Thursday of every month. This is the September 2018 edition, and we look forward to seeing you next month. Thank you, everybody, and bye-bye.